Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at an absolute monster of a power supply from our good friends over at Thermaltake. This is their new titanium rated power supply. This is part of the TF range. This is the TF3 1300 watt, an absolute beast of a power supply. Now, this has obviously got all the latest and greatest features built into it, such as supporting ATX 3.1, PCI Express Gen 5.1. It's got dual PCI Express Gen 5 connectors. It's got a host of fantastic connection options. And if you're using a slightly older graphics card, it still supports the old PCI Express 8 pins. There's a lot to like about this power supply, again, obviously being titanium rated, of up to 94% efficiency if you're over in the States or if you're on a slightly higher voltage system, then potentially edging towards 96. This thing is nuts. It comes with a 10 year warranty and has got all those usual features, over voltage protection, under voltage protection, thermal protections, all that kind of stuff. It's all built into this mad power supply. So on today's video, I'm going to go through, do an unboxing, show you what it's all about, talk about some of the connections, some of the features, and then we'll go through some of the specs. And then you'll be able to decide whether or not this is gonna be suitable for your next monster build. And before we get into it, Thinking of monster builds, now I'm trying to work out who this power supply is actually aimed at because it has a very, very diverse range of options. So it actually has the ability to connect up to 16 SATA drives. So it's got 16 SATA ports. It's got eight Molex ports. Plus we've got the dual PCI Express connections for those new Gen 5 graphics cards. And yeah, is absolutely insane. So whether or not you're possibly a content creator, maybe you're getting into AI and you've got multiple GPUs, or maybe you're trying to build some kind of server and you just want a ton of hard drives in your system, maybe some sort of Plex storage system, this effectively is gonna be good for everyone. And obviously gamers are gonna be over the moon because of that massive voltage and wattage. Yeah, anyway, let's get on and take a look and see what this thing's all about. So we'll start off with the packaging. Obviously this is the Tough Power TF3 80 plus titanium rated, 1300 watts, fully modular power supply, supports PCI Express Gen 5, as we said, also ATX 3.1. It also has an overclocking mode switch, which is a kind of unusual, I've not seen this before. And also because this is titanium and it's got to maintain those very strict levels, it's got 100% Japanese capacitors. And also, like I said, it comes with that 10 year guarantee. On the side of the box, it talks more about the overclocking mode switch. So the OCM switch allows you to switch between multi-rail operation. So it's actually got four 12 volt rails, or you can have it with a kind of single rail, depending on your use case scenario. Also on the box there, it talks about the measurements. So we're looking at 86 by 150 by 165 millimeters. On the back of the box, it goes over more of the same. So we've got the feature spec there, the fully modular power supply, also the titanium certified efficiency, also, less than 30 millivolts low ripple noise design. Also, it's got extremely strict voltage regulation, less than 2% of a difference there, which far exceeds Intel specifications, which are up to, I think it's 7%. And also it goes over some of the connector specifications and what was included in the box, and also the output specification. So this is where it gets really interesting. If we could take a closer look at the output specification, you can see there we've got four 12 volt rails. So 12 volt V1, V2, V3, V4, etc. Each one of those rails can put out up to 600 watts on their own. Obviously combine 1300 watts if you decide to make it a single rail. So yeah, this is an absolutely bananas power supply. So taking a look at the physical characteristics. So the first thing you'll notice when you take it out of the box is this thing is really, really heavy. It appears to be built like an absolute tank, which I guess you'd expect. And that is one of the reasons why Thermaltake are proud of it and will put a 10 year warranty on it. So taking a look at, we've got this really nice ventilation mesh. This is the better mesh. This equates to basically very low noise and also excellent airflow. And to back that up, there's also a new improved fan in these, which uh, some people have had complaints in the past over some of Thermaltake's fans in their power supplies. This one is absolutely glorious, 140 mil, and it does look very similar to some of Thermaltake's actual case fans. So we all know how quiet those can be. This seems to be a very good step in the right direction. On the sides, we've got the badging on there. So Tough Power TF3, 1300 watt, that is on both sides. So if you want to display and show off your power supply, you certainly can do. Taking a look at the back, so we've actually got a specific type of connection here. This isn't the traditional kind of kettle lead style because of this extra wattage and amperage. So there is a special plug which is included. Also, you've got your on-off switch, 
And next to that, we have got the OCM switch or overclocking mode. So in the default configuration, this is using those four 12 volt rails, or if you go into OC mode, then it will combine those to make you have one powerful 12 volt rail, which again, for overclocking is uh, yeah pretty handy. I should mention as well, if you do want to switch between the two modes, between the multi-mode and also single rail, you do need to power off the power slide before you switch the button. Don't press it while it's on. It's basically going to do nothing. It does have to be switched off to switch modes. Also on the power supply, it's got a sticker on there showing you all the specifications, which you're more than welcome to read through or pull the screen. And on the back of the power supply, this is where things get very interesting. So there's an absolute ton of connection options here some of which are kind of new. I've not seen this before, at least not on the Thermaltake branded power supplies. And we'll start off in the top corner. So we've got our two PCI Express connections up there with another one just on the side there. So you've got a group of three there. Next to that, you've got your accessory connections. So you've got one, two, three, four, five of those, plus an additional one down there. So six all together. Then you've got your two PCI Express Gen 5 12 volt two by six connections. Two of those, which again is slightly unusual, I've not seen that before, and I guess you're going to have to have relatively deep pockets to be able to populate that, but it is an option, so this can grow with you. And then along the bottom edge there, you've got all the additional connections for your motherboard power supply, etc. Something which is actually very clever, which I like about this actually, is if you are seriously into hardcore overclocking, and you want to make sure that your kind of your levels are balanced or whatever, or if you're not doing overclocking, you just want to make sure that everything has kind of got enough juice on its own particular rail. They've actually marked up which ones go on which rail. So as you can see there, the PCIe ones are on 12 volt V2. So that's clearly labeled up there. You've got the V1s, V4s, etc. So you can kind of work out which ones are on which. And obviously the PCI Express connections, the new style ones for the 12 2x6, they each have their own dedicated rail. So that is the 12 volt V3 and also the 12 volt v4 so it's pretty insane stuff so let's take a look now at what we get in terms of cabling now there is a lot so uh, strap yourselves in and actually something they've done now is actually made it so the cables actually look like they're braided or have some kind of texture to them which actually is a, a nice touch it doesn't really change anything but certainly it does look quite nice so we'll start off with the first one so this is your 24 pin main power connector for your motherboard this one comes in at 600 mil in length in total again it's got those nice flat cables so making cable management that much easier next we've got our eps or cpu power connectors now you get two of those included in the box and um, one of which is a solid eight pin they're all marked up as well so you can tell which one's which that's clearly written on there so you've got an eight pin and also you've got a split one as well so this one will do eight pin or four plus four or just a four on its own these are 650 mil in length, which is actually very handy because there's a lot of modern cases these days which actually need to have the kind of wires stretched around a little bit. Uh, Leanne Lee, I'm looking at you. So yeah, 650 is excellent to have that little bit of extra wiggle room for tidy cable management. Next up, we've got our PCI Express Gen 5.1 connectors. So these are the 12 volt 6 by 2s And also they've made a change on these slightly. They must have had some dye left over from the factory. So these actually got matcha green connections on them on the end there which you're not ever going to see or at least you shouldn't do because if you can see any green when you plug this into your power supply or your graphics card then you're doing it wrong it has to be completely inserted and this is a nice little way of visually checking that your cable is fully inserted again both of these are rated up to the full amount for pci express gen 5.1 which is 600 watts on each Next up, we've got our PCI Express cables. So these are the kind of older traditional style ones. So the either eight pin or six plus twos. You actually get three of these cables installed. So if you're rocking a graphics card, which needs three of them, then you've got one individual cable for each one, which is ideally what you want. Although having said that, they do have a couple of the cables. So two of them actually have the kind of fly lead on them or the piggyback. So if you want to double up a couple of connections, you can do. And these in terms of length are 600 mil from the power supply to the first plug, and then you've got an additional 150 for the extra piggyback. Like I said, three of those are included in the box. So again, depending on what graphics card you've got, basically all your bases are covered. And next we've got our SATA connections. And like I said, this is absolutely nuts. Uh, the SATA cables, again, really nice flat cables, easy for cable management. This cable, 600 mil from the first plug to the power supply. Then you've got an additional 150 mil between each of the subsequent ones. You get four of these cables included and each one of the cables can plug into four devices. 
So you're looking at 16 SATA based devices in total that can be connected in, which again is kind of nuts. But again, if you're thinking of maybe building some sort of NAS, file server, that kind of thing, then that could potentially be very helpful. And last of all, we've got the accessory connection or Molex or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'd like to call them Molex because I think most people understand what that is. Same deal with these, so 600 mil from the power supply to the first connector. And then each one of these cables has four plugs on it and there are two cables included. So up to eight accessories or Molex devices. And that is pretty much it for the cables. No floppy drive style connector on here, which is uh, probably a step in the right direction. If you do need that, then you're probably rocking something either very old or it should come with an adapter of its own. And also with all these cables, obviously you're probably not gonna need all of these at the same time. And being that the power supply is actually fully modular, you don't have to have them all connected. So Thermaltake include a nice accessory bag to put all your accessories in whilst you're done. And speaking of accessories as well, there is actually the power cable included, which will be correct for your region. Also, they've included some branded cable wraps there. So you can do a little bit of cable management. And of course, you've got the screws to attach it to your PC case. So there you go, there is a look at the Thermaltake Tough Power TF1300 Titanium Power Supply. This thing really is an absolute beast and is something which I uh, I really would like to have in my system. Unfortunately, this is a review unit, so it will be going back to thermal take. But yeah, if you're looking for a new power supply, which maybe I will be in the coming future, I think this is going to be definitely towards the top of my list. Now, of course, if you are interested in picking up one of these power supplies, there will be links in the video description. So feel free to check those out for pricing in your local areas. It will differ from place to place. As we know, there's a lot of kind of strange things going on in the world at the moment. But it seems like that is slightly coming to an end at the time of recording this video, which is towards the end of May 2025. So, yeah, who knows? Anyway, check out the links in the video description and uh, hopefully this will be suitable for your next monster build. So there you go, that's been the Tough Power TF1300. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.